exchange. So, we will be discussing the meaning and concept of exchange, rights and liabilities of parties, what to do if cheated and the difference between exchange and sale. So, let us check it out what is the meaning of exchange. The simple English meaning of exchange is an act of giving one thing and receiving another in return. However, the types of things those are being exchanged depend on the two parties who are exchanging with free will. Please focus on this term free will. It may be of same kind or it may be of different types. So, law does not define something like that these are the things that can be exchanged and these are the things that cannot be exchanged, not at all. So, depending upon your choice and with whom you are going to exchange, so based on the mutual agreement or mutual consent, you can exchange the things. So, it may be of same type. What it means? If you are exchanging a car, means you have the car and your friend has also the car. You like his car and he likes your car. So, you just exchanged. So, the product is the thing that, that is going to be exchanged are of same type. But, it may be of different types. That is, if you have expensive car, say you have the Mercedes Fometic and your friend has flat that is also worth of around 50 lakhs or something like that. So, both of you agreed to exchange. You will give your car and he will give his flat. So, in that condition it is also possible. Okay. So, exchange has not a defined criteria in, in terms of what are the things that is going to be exchanged and what are the things that cannot be exchanged provided that the item should not be unlawful. Okay? So, keep in mind it is not like even unlawful thing can be exchanged legally not at all. So, that is not possible under the law. So, exchange is possible of movable and movable properties as well as immovable and immovable properties and between immovable and movable properties. So, it solely depends on the consent and free will and choice of the parties who are going to exchange the things. So, there is no hard and fast rule regarding the item, the product which is going to be exchanged. So, now let us check out the another point. But the section 118 of Transfer of Property Act defines exchange as when two person, please pay attention, when two person mutually transfer the ownership of one thing for the ownership of another as we have seen in the example that you are giving your car, the ownership of your car is now going to your friend and your friend is giving his flat. So, ownership of that flat from your friend to coming to you. So, neither thing or both things being money only the transaction is called an exchange. Okay? So, what are the things that is going to be exchanged that has to be exchanged as per the rule. So, that is the thing that is defined under section 118 of Transfer of Property Act. So, it is the exchange of ownership of two products. Next point is further a transfer of property in completion of an exchange can be made only in manner provided for the transfer of such property by sale. See what this point is saying that if the value of the property is rupees 100 or more than a conveyance deed is required to be executed and that must be registered. So, what this point is saying basically the, that the exchange, it is not supposed to be 
if it is mutual even then it is not something like that you can do it orally well of course the value of as we have studied while discussing this cell that if the property basically regarding the immovable property the value of that property is less than 100 rupees then fine it can be delivered orally or but if it is more than 100 then it has to be registered okay so similarly the same rule need to be followed here if the property is worth of 100 and more than 100 then you have to register this exchange so that it is basically good for both of you it's not something like that anyone else is going to be benefited but both of you because if something wrong happened in future then you can claim this is done under the law okay so that is the manner basically legal process of exchange now the next point is what are the rights and liabilities of parties as per the section 120 of the transfer of the property act each party to such transfer by exchange enjoys the rights and is subject to liabilities see enjoys the right and subject to liabilities of a seller we have studied while discussing the sale what is the liability of a seller what is the liability of a buyer what is the right of a seller what is the right of a buyer so there we have studied separately but here one party is also a buyer basically receiver and also transferer because he is also transferring his product so one person has both the properties likewise both the persons have both the properties so all those rights and liabilities respectively will be applied here to both of them not one of them rather both of them respectively so you can link one topic with other if you miss the one part then it is difficult to appreciate to the other so always keep in mind the terms and conditions and the liabilities and the rights that we have discussed under the topic sale so the same thing saying here pertaining to the thing which he gives and enjoys the rights and is subject to liabilities of a buyer pertaining to the things which he takes okay so the thing that he is giving for that he has the liability and the thing he is receiving he has the right so both the things for the same person he has the liability and the rights and similarly the person the another person also has the rights and liabilities now the next point is what to do if cheated maybe though while just exchanging the goods you found the something very nice but the person who exchanged his goods he didn't tell you the facts the defects of that goods so after exchange after a few days you come to know that goods you received in exchange has some defect so in that condition what you will do so see in that condition you have the right under the section 119 of transfer of property act what it says if any party to an exchange or any person claiming through or under such party is by reason of any defect in the title of the other party deprived of the thing or any part of the thing received by him in exchange then unless contrary intention appears from the terms of the exchange such other party is liable to him or any person claiming through or under him for loss caused thereby or at the option of the person so deprived for the return of the thing transferred if still in the possession of such other party or his legal representative or a transferee from him without consideration you must lost in this big sentence well no problem it is very simple thing saying that first take an example you and your friend both are agreed to exchange your car you have the car and he has also the car both of them 
exchanged. You have say you have the Honda City car and he has the Toyota car and both of you exchange the things. The point saying here after a few days you come to know there is certain defect in the engine of the car that you received means you received the Toyota car. So in Toyota car there is some defect. But as, as the provision saying here if that defect is something like known to the person who has given to you, who has, with whom you have exchanged, then he is liable. But if the defect of such in nature that he even doesn't know about this, then he won't be liable. Now it's your loss. Okay. But if he knows and done it intentionally, only then he is liable. In that condition, what the remedy it is defined here that in that condition, if it is proved that he did it intentionally, then he needs to return back your car, what you have given to him. That is one of the solutions. But again, provision says that provided if that car is still with him. Suppose you gave your car to him and he sold out or he lost it in accident or whatever thing happened. So in that condition, if that product is not with him, then how he is supposed to be returning back to you. But uh, still, you have the right to claim the damages. So this is the provision that saying under the section 119 of Transfer of Property Act. I believe you now must understood this point. What to do if you being cheated? Okay. Now the last point of this video is what is difference between exchange and sale? See in exchange essentially properties whether it is piece of land, house, apartment, commercial space etc. whatever movable or immovable thing are transacted from both the sides. So from both the sides there are product whether it is movable or immovable properties. So it involves some product some substance. However, in the sale from one side it is property of any sort such as real, personal or movable, immovable, whatever the things of any sort. And from other side it is essentially the reasonable price in the form of money. So if you are selling something, you are receiving money and if you are buying something, you are receiving the product and paying the money. So this is the difference. Note. However, in exchange, sometimes along with the property, maybe because of price, value difference, price, that is money may also involved, but such payment would not make the exchange lose its character as such. What does it mean that? See, I have a flat worth of 1 crore and you have a flat worth of say 70 lakhs. So both of us agreed to exchange this, but at the same time since the value of my flat is 30 lakhs more than yours, then if it, but it has to be mutually agreed. You are agreed to pay 30 lakhs differences to compensate the difference. So in that condition, we are, though we are exchanging the flat, but you also paying the money, isn't it? So money is involved, but since money is involved, nevertheless this exchange will not lose its character, what it is saying here. Even then, even money is involved, but even then it is considered as exchange, not the sale. So I believe now this point is very much clear to you and this is all about the exchange that we have discussed here, that is the meaning of exchange that is the rights and liabilities of the parties who are involved in the exchange, what to do if you are cheated, the difference between exchange and sale. So these are the things that we have discussed in this video. I believe you must understood all these things and if not or if you have any confusion, please watch it again because I repeat it in my every video. So watch it again. See you in next video.